this morning, I saw several flocks of wild geese flying quite low, so I think that's a sign that spring is just around the corner. We're going to sing our gathering song this morning, which is Voices United, or no, more voices, number 18, Lord, we can oh, we better do the count. Announcements. Okay. <laughs> I'm jumping right in here. Are there announcements? Yes, there are announcements. One, I've been asked please to announce if you've already picked up your annual report for next Sunday, there is an extra page. Reports that came in late and a couple of uh, corrections. So please pick up that sheet from the back and add it into your annual report. You'll need that next week. Um, also, um, a reminder to UCW members, I will send out a notice. The UCW will, will be meeting on March the 19th uh, at 1.30 in the afternoon here in the church. So that's Tuesday, March the 19th. Not this coming week, but the week after. They decided to make a birthday party for me. <laughs> Happens to be my birthday, but I'll let them make that. <laughs> well, I guess that's not going to be a surprise now. <laughs> Anyways, I still have more posters for the Vintage and Treasure sale. We've been trying to get them all over town, but some of you might know someplace that you haven't seen one. I've got extras here, so please feel free to get some from me and make sure that they're in every place we possibly can. And I try to really emphasize the fact that we can only sell what people generously donate and uh, that we're taking uh, good quality donations until April 20th. The other UCW thing that is incredibly important and the deadline is looming, at Chestermere, coming up at Chestermere, April, the first weekend of April, is a UCW event. Uh, you, many of you got an email about it, but we have to pre-register, and this is about where is UCW going, and this is a Chinook Wins uh, event uh, that I think, because we live the closest to Chesterford, we better have the best turnout of ladies show up, because this is a chance to have our voices heard and to listen to the speakers, and see what's really happening with UCW. So I have registration forms, it's $25 for the day, and we register and, and they would like our money ahead of time, of course. But let me know if you can go, because we need to get two or three car loads, I would hope, to go. I'm going to put the posters up, but there's registration forms and the deadline has to be in this week. So it is urgent and we really must um, attend. This is our first Chinook Winds District UCW event. Thank you. Good morning. Another deadline this week is your Purdy's chocolate order for Easter. And if you could uh, place your order either online or with Charlotte. Charlotte, can you give us a wave? Then uh, we would really appreciate that. So thank you. Good morning. Uh, Don Jansen here. I'm uh, announcing the annual meeting on March 17th, which is next Sunday. Uh, for our annual meeting in Potluck. So just remember the annual meeting. Uh, this is our second announcement. Thank you. Good morning. Just a, a quick little one. Uh, somebody's had a very special birthday in our group, and it's Mary Ann. So I think we should sing happy birthday to her. We're, we're going to sing happy birthday, but uh, my husband Bob is going to have that same birthday this coming Wednesday, so uh, we can say happy birthday to them. I'm sure there's lots of other March birthdays. Uh, Jeff Scott is going to have a birthday at the end of the month, so we'll sing happy birthday to him too. We used to celebrate him now we tolerate him.
We light this candle remembering that we follow the most amazing man who brings the light of the world to us. And let us worship together by singing, Lord, prepare me with more voices, number 18.
speech and inner quiet. We long for a place of rest and refuge. We are drawn to this circle of faith because there is peace at its center. Here, may we connect deeply with you so that our soul may discover what it is after. Amen. And we're going to sing again another Lenten hymn this time, Voices United 120. <laughs> No way, 
her friend responded. How could you possibly hear a cricket with all this noise? You must be imagining it. Besides, I've never even seen a cricket in the city. No, really, I didn't hear a cricket. I'll show you. She stopped for a moment, then led her friend across the street to a big cement planter with a tree in it. Pushing back some of the leaves, she found a small brown cricket. That's amazing, said her friend. You must have superhuman hearing. What's your secret? No, my hearing is just the same as yours. There's no secret, the first woman replied. Watch, I'll show you. She reached into her pocket, pulled out some loose change, and threw it on the sidewalk. Amid all the noise of the city, everyone within 30 feet turned their heads to see where the sound of the money was coming from. See, she said, it's all a matter of what you're listening for. <laughs> we'll continue with our scripture reading this morning. The first reading is from Kings 19, verses 9 to 13a. At that place he came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are seeking my life to take it away. The word then said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks into pieces. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake, and after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the sound, after the fire rather, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then there came a voice to him that said, What are you doing here, Elijah? Our next reading is from Psalm 46, verses 8 to 11. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of our sacred story. When I was in my early twenties, one of my favorite folk duos was Simon and Garfunkel. And one of my favorite songs that they wrote and sang was The Sounds of Silence. I still enjoy listening to that song. 
It is a song about the inability to truly communicate. The opening line, hello darkness, my old friend, I've come to talk to you again, can be interpreted both literally and metaphorically as representing solitude, alienation, and the absence of meaningful communication. If you really want to dig into the interpretation of the lyrics, you will find that there is a much deeper meaning. But for this morning, I want you to think of silence as your old friend. And there is a quote that says, still for a moment the busy shuttle of time that we may see the pattern in the weaving Still for a moment, the busy shuttle of time, that we may see the pattern in the weaving. This lovely phrase from a book of common prayer sums up one of the purposes of Lent. Lent is a time to be still and to know that God is God. A time to let God speak to the silences in our hearts. If you're familiar with music notation, you will know that there is no music in a rest, but there's the making of music in it. And people are always missing that part of the life melody. Lent is intended to provide some significant silences. Lent presents a time for the silence that molds us closer to God's design. Study to be quiet, Isaiah says. Elijah, in retreat, finds that God speaks not in dramatic, thunderous tones, but in the still, small voice. I subscribe to the prayer bench. I don't know whether any of you people here do or not, but it's produced by Janice McLean, um, who lives in Cape Breton Island. And her Lenten retreat this year embraces silence. She says, the mystics, the saints, the scientists all agree we need silence. Studies show that silence helps reduce stress levels, supports memory and learning, enhances creativity and problem solving, aids sleep, and improves mental health. Silence is a language of the soul that draws us nearer to the mystery of God. John 14, verse 20 says, You will know that you are in me, and I am in you. We yearn for silence, and yet we fear it. Making silence is almost extinct in our culture, and we are forgetting how to make silence or even recognize it when space opens. There is a quote from the Book of the Hearts by Jan Sweeney and Mark Burroughs that says, there is a language so beautiful that is never spoken. There is a deep sort of silence that may never adequately fall into words. That, I tell you, is more valuable than any jewel or any diamond. Anthony DeMello, in his little book, One Minute Wisdom, asks the question, how shall I experience oneness with creation? By listening, said the Master. And how am I to listen? Become an ear that gives heed to every single thing <coughs> the universe is saying. The moment you hear something you yourself are saying, 
stop. In other words, don't be filling the silence with the sound of your own voice. Silence is something of an endangered species. Studies show that we live in a culture with an incessant flow of sounds and constant need for background sounds. We live in a noisy world. Silence is uncomfortable. Too much silence leaves us close to our sadness, grief, and worry. So we quiet the uncomfortable inner noise with outer noise. Silence is unsettling. We are all familiar with the uncomfortable feeling that overcomes us when a conversation pals. Studies have shown that when a pause in a conversation reaches four seconds, one or more of the conversationalists will invariably blurt something, a comment about the weather, or gosh, is that the time? Rather than let the silence extend to five seconds. Being silent in the natural world is a particular kind of silence that includes bird song and the sounds of the breeze in the trees. By truly taking a moment to observe and listen to it, we grow to know and value the world we live in. Silence is not always the opposite of sound. When I was on the island of Maui recently, I walked every morning on the beach, and I had a favorite spot where I could sit and listen to the waves crashing on the shore. I could observe the egrets and the other shorebirds, and if I was lucky, I might see a whale breaching offshore or a turtle on the beach. This was my silent time of the day. And it always amazed me as I was walking on the beach, the number of people I would see with earbuds in their ears or their cell phone in their hand, busily texting somebody or having a conversation with somebody, totally blocking out the sounds and sights of nature around them. In warmer weather, I have a basket chair in my backyard that hangs in my Brandon Elm tree. And in the summer, and in the spring, summer, and fall, I like to sit there sometimes with a cup of tea and a book, other times just being. Sitting there listening to the sounds of the birds in the trees above me, or observing the flowers, or smelling the scents of spring, summer, and fall. Josie Hobday from Praying Magazine says this, When I was a little girl, my mother took us kids for prayer walks out in the country in the summertime every evening after supper. I've been walking into the world ever since. And while my walks with my mother were in silence, there was a whole lot of talking going on. The world was telling me about itself, about myself, and about the mystery permeating everything. Silence is golden. Through these beautiful words, we see and feel the majesty of silence. We sit in silent appreciation of nature's great bounty and wondrous displays, such as the northern lights, a sky full of shooting stars, or the unfurling of a butterfly's wings. As we take in these magnificent sights, we realize that words are not necessary and will never be sufficient to explain the marvel in front of our eyes. 
And I repeat again for you that quote from the Book of Hearts. There is a language so beautiful that is never spoken. There is a deep sort of silence that may never adequately fall into words. Silence truly is golden. It is, it is in the moments of silence that God is able to touch our lives. How silently, how silently a wondrous gift is given. Be still and know that I am God. One of my favorite hymns in Voices United is In the Quiet Curve of Evening, and it sums up for me all that I've been trying to say in this sermon. So I'm going to close with some of the words from that hymn, and when I finish, you're going to find there's a few moments of silence. In the quiet curve of evening, in the sinking of the days, in the silky void of darkness, you are there. In the lapses of my breathing, in the space between my ways, in the crater carved by sadness, you are there. You are there. You are there. You are there. In the rests between the phrases, in the cracks between the stars, in the gaps between the meaning, you are there. In the melting down of endings, in the cooling of the sun, in the solstice of the winter, you are there. You are there. You are there. You are there. join together in singing the hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See, 371 in Voices United. <laughs>
weekend was International Women's Day, so I uh, chose a minute for mission uh, to, that speaks to the Ministry of Women and its access to education in Zambia. Women for Change is a mission and service funded global partner that empowers girls and women through education. Access to education is a major challenge in Zambia, especially in rural areas where the majority of people live below the poverty line. An estimated 500,000 children of primary and secondary school age are not enrolled in school. Rural children, especially girls, are more likely to drop out of the school system or never be enrolled at all. Traditional attitudes toward women, poverty, early marriage, gender-based violence, lack of sanitation facilities, and the decision to use scarce resources to educate boys rather than girls all block girls and women from fully participating educational opportunities. When the United Church women heard stories of girls and women in Zambia, they wanted to help and decided to support Women for Change as their major project for three years. The people behind Women for Change knew that it takes more than just money, books, and shoes to motivate girls to remain in school. There are few role models, particularly in rural areas, women who have received higher education and can inspire girls by showing them the difference an education can make. With the support of United Church Women and through mission and service, Women for Change will focus on programming to create opportunities to give girls and young women living in rural areas the encouragement they need to remain in school. If mission and service giving is already a regular part of your life, thank you so much. If you have not given, please join me in making mission and service giving a regular part of your life of faith. Loving our neighbor is at the heart of mission and service. I know your offerings are already in the plates at the back, so we will sing together the doxology 541. Loving and gracious God, 
We come to you this day amidst our busy lives, trusting that you will be there to help us find those few moments of silence so we can hear your voice in the gently falling snow or rain, in the chickadees fluttering around the bird feeder, in the starry night sky, in the sunrise at dawn and sunsets glow. Help us also to be aware of those people and places and situations in our world that are calling for us to reach out and be a source of God's healing love. For the lost and forgotten, may they be found and remembered. For the victims of war, violence, abuse, and neglect, may they find peace justice and love. For the sick and grieving, may they find comfort and healing. For those who, who oppress and tear down, may they experience such grace that they will in turn liberate and build up. For our political leaders, may they be guided with a passion for justice and not be swayed by the seduction of power and wealth. For the children, may they learn from our mistakes, right our wrongs, and lead us into the future. And for our church, may we find the hope and strength to be the hands and feet of Jesus to carry out his mission in the world as we listen for that still, small voice. These prayers and all our prayers we ask in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
do Go Down in Peace as a round. We'll sing it all through together once. Then Laura, if you'll make this <coughs> one, and all of this one. Go with us. 